Hi, this is Peter from Anatomy Zone and in this video we will be taking a look at the anatomy of the sacral plexus. This video is a collaboration between Anatomy Zone and teachmeanatomy.info. Check out the links in the video description below for some useful articles to accompany this video tutorial. The sacral plexus is a network of nerve fibres that supplies the skin and muscles of the pelvis and lower limb. It is located on the surface of the posterior pelvic wall, anterior to the piriformis muscle. This tutorial follows on from my tutorial on the lumbar plexus, and it is useful to have a knowledge of the nerves that are derived from this plexus in conjunction with knowledge of the anatomy of the sacral plexus. To recap very briefly, the lumbar plexus is formed from the anterior rami of L1 to L4. It gives rise to six nerves which you can see in this model here. The iliohypogastric nerve, the ilioinguinal, the genitofemoral which pierces the psoas major, the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve and the large obturator and femoral nerves. The sacral plexus is formed by the anterior rami, or divisions, of the sacral spinal nerves S1, S2, S3 and S4. It also receives contributions from the lumbar spinal nerves L4 and L5, which combine to form the lumbosacral trunk. The spinal nerves from S1 to S4 form the basis of the sacral plexus. At each vertebral level, paired spinal nerves leave the spinal cord via the intervertebral foramina of the vertebral column. Each nerve then divides into anterior and posterior branches, which are known as rami. The sacral plexus begins as the anterior fibres of the spinal nerves S1, S2, S3 and S4. These sacral fibres emerge via the anterior sacral foramina. They are joined by the fourth and fifth lumbar roots, which combine to form the lumbosacral trunk. This descends into the pelvis to meet the sacral roots as they emerge from the spinal cord. The sacral plexus is formed on the anterior surface of the piriformis muscle, which forms the posterolateral border of the pelvic wall. I've switched over now to a schematic of the sacral plexus, which we will use in conjunction with the 3D model. The anterior rami of the S1 to S4 spinal roots and the lumbosacral trunk have both dorsal and ventral divisions, which come together to form the major peripheral nerves. In this schematic, the dorsal divisions are indicated by the darker shading. There are five major peripheral nerves which derive from the sacral plexus, the superior and inferior gluteal nerves, the sciatic nerve, the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve, and the pudendal nerve. There are, in addition, numerous smaller branches which provide innovation to the pelvic walls, floors and individual muscles of the gluteal region. These nerves from the sacral plexus descend down the posterior pelvic wall and have three possible courses. The first of which is to leave the pelvis via the greater sciatic foramen and enter the gluteal region of the lower limb, either above or below the piriformis muscle. The second course is to remain within the pelvis and to innervate the pelvic muscles, organs and perineum. The third course is to leave via the greater sciatic foramen, loop around the sacrospinous ligament and re-enter via the lesser sciatic foramen to supply lateral pelvic structures and perineal structures. Most of the nerves take the first route, leaving the pelvis by passing inferior to the piriformis via the greater sciatic foramen. We will look now at the main nerves of the sacral plexus in turn, and then take a look at some of the smaller remaining nerves. The superior gluteal nerve originates from nerve roots L4, L5 and S1. The superior gluteal nerve leaves the pelvis via the greater sciatic foramen, entering the gluteal region superiorly to the piriformis muscle. I've removed the gluteus maximus and the gluteus medius so that you can see this nerve here. It is accompanied by the superior gluteal artery and vein for much of its course. In terms of motor function, it innervates the gluteus minimus, which you can see here, the gluteus medius, which I've just brought back, and the tensor fascia lati.
The inferior gluteal nerve originates from spinal nerve roots L5, S1 and S2. This nerve leaves the pelvis via the greater sciatic foramen, entering the gluteal region inferiorly to the piriformis muscle. It is accompanied by the inferior gluteal artery and vein for much of its course. Its motor function is to innervate the gluteus maximus muscle. The sciatic nerve is the largest nerve of the body and it's derived from five nerve roots from L4 to S3. It has two components, the common fibular component and the tibial component. The common fibular component is formed from the dorsal divisions of L4 to S2. The tibial component is formed from the ventral divisions of L4 to S3. The sciatic nerve is formed on the anterior aspect of the piriformis muscle and it exits the pelvis via the greater sciatic foramen, inferior to the piriformis. In terms of motor function, the tibial portion of the sciatic nerve innervates all of the muscles in the posterior compartment of the thigh, except for the short head of the biceps femoris. It also innervates the hamstring portion of the adductor magnus muscle. Additionally, the tibial portion innervates all muscles in the posterior compartment of the leg and all muscles in the sole of the foot. The common fibular portion innervates the short head of the biceps femoris and all muscles in the anterior and lateral compartments of the leg and it also innervates the extensor digitorum brevis muscle. In terms of sensory function, the tibial portion innervates the skin on the posterolateral surface of the leg as well as the sole of the foot. The common fibular portion innervates the skin on the anterolateral surface of the leg and the dorsal aspect of the foot. The posterior femoral cutaneous nerve originates from spinal nerve roots S1, S2 and S3. The posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh leaves the pelvis via the greater sciatic foramen, entering the gluteal region inferiorly to the piriformis muscle. You can see it highlighted in green colour on this model. It descends deep to the gluteus maximus and runs down the back of the thigh to the knee. This nerve has only sensory function as the name suggests. It innervates the skin on the posterior surface of the thigh and the leg and it also innervates the skin of the perineum. The pudendal nerve originates from nerve roots S2, S3 and S4. This nerve and the nerve to the obturator internus are the two nerves which leave the pelvis via the greater sciatic foramen to enter the gluteal region and then they loop around the sacrospinous ligament to enter the perineum via the lesser sciatic foramen. In terms of motor function, the pudendal nerve innervates the skeletal muscles in the perineum, the external urethral sphincter, the external anal sphincter and the levator ani muscle. In terms of its sensory function, it innervates the penis and the clitoris and most of the skin of the perineum. We've taken a look now at the five major nerves of the sacral plexus, but in addition to these, there are a number of smaller branches. These tend to be nerves that directly supply muscles, with the exception of the perforating cutaneous nerve, which supplies the skin over the inferior gluteal region, and the pelvic splanchnic nerves, which innervate the abdominal viscera. The perforating cutaneous nerve originates from S2 and S3 and innervates the skin over the gluteal fold. It is called perforating because it perforates the sacrotuberous ligament to provide its cutaneous innervation. You can see this ligament highlighted bilaterally in green colour, attaching from the sacrum to the ischial tuberosity. The nerve to piriformis is formed from S2 and occasionally from S1, innervating the piriformis muscle directly. The nerve to obturator internus originates from L5 to S2, and like the pudendal nerve, it exits the pelvis via the greater sciatic foramen, loops around the sacrospinous ligament, and re-enters via the lesser sciatic foramen to directly innervate the obturator internus muscle and also the superior gemellus.
the nerve to quadrator femoris originates from L4 to S1 and leaves the pelvis via the greater sciatic foramen inferior to the piriformis muscle to innervate the quadratus femoris as well as the inferior gemellus muscle. So that's a rundown of the anatomy of the sacral plexus. For more anatomy articles, check out teachmeanatomy.info and for more anatomy videos and flashcards, check out anatomyzone.com. If you have found this video useful, please click on the like button below and subscribe to Anatomy Zone for more tutorials. Thank you for watching.